playwriting has come a long way over the last 100 years. From the old country manor house farces to abstract exploration of the human condition. Many writers have had significant influence over the past century. In the mid-1950s, the UK's John Osborne's social realism, depicting human struggle inside ordinary homes, gave rise to the term kitchen sink drama. Across the Atlantic, plays like Cat on a Hot Tin Roof by Tennessee Williams and A View from the Bridge by Arthur Miller were delivering blistering comment, challenging the social stereotypes of the day. I think for me, the playwright who's had the most influence on US theatre, it was definitely um, Arthur Miller. Basically, he explored the theme of American dream and what it is to be um, an immigrant coming to, to America, you know, trying to, to make as much money as you, as you can. Materialism, consumerism, basically, and how people's lives are shattered when they don't reach, you know, that perfection. I think he's basically had a lot of influence on lots of other modern playwrights today. Throughout the last century, writers like Samuel Beckett and his absurd characters in totally illogical situations, and Harold Pinter, with his hybrid of both genres, neither absurd or realistic, have inspired and challenged an ever-changing audience with their universal vision. I think many of our major 20th century playwrights were involved in the wars. So their first-hand acquaintance with all the suffering and slaughter was very, very immediate. And I think then after the war, that sense of exhaustion and disillusionment in Europe, disillusionment about religion, disillusionment about science, rationalism, the whole modern rhetoric of progress, all of that, very, very bitter in many cases, I think. I think one of the people like Lecoq and Dario Fo, who lived through the war as young men, but were involved in the resistance in different ways, the, the, you know, the post-World War challenge was a cultural one as much as an economic and a political one, and how do you invent cultural conditions which would prevent the hideousness of what happened in Germany and across the world ever happening again. That was the kind of aspiration, that was the utopian aspiration. So for people like Dario Fo and Jacques Lecoq, uh, culture, theatre, poetry, art, had a role to play in that. And therefore, uh, it needed rethinking. It needed, it, it, needed a challenge. it needed to be challenged, not more of the same. Across Europe, there was a new movement developing, existentialism. Although philosophers had been questioning religion, life and mortality for hundreds of years, it was now at the forefront of European art. When millions of people had died and you had survived, it raised many questions. The main one being, why? Existentialism is quite romantic. It puts the emphasis back on the individual to be responsible for life and find meaning in life. Playwrights identified the futile loss of life. They created characters that were lost and found it difficult to recognize their worth in a society that does not value life. The play originally was deeply provocative when it first appeared. And the danger is that what was provocative when it first appeared was on the one hand, it was theatrically totally revolutionary. It rejected all the conventions of realism, character, plot, and so on and so on, okay? It was intensely meta-theatrical, which is also very modern. But I think that where it was most provocative was actually in the title and what lay behind it, Waiting for Godot. Because after the war, if you were in France, in fact a major theme for theologians and religious types had been, oh no, God didn't just allow all this appalling suffering and slaughter. We have to understand the problem of suffering, we have to wait, we have to wait. And that theological notion of waiting was a big theme, a big apologetic theme for theologians. Um, Beckett really puts two fingers up to that, I think, because in a sense he's deconstructing that very vital bit of theology and rejecting it.